We're live. Yes, it works. Hello. We're live. Welcome along to the live stream, everybody. Hello, my name's Gavin Hoey. I'm one of the presenters right here on Adorama TV. Adorama, the place where everything you need for photography, it's right here. It's right live. Anything can go wrong in the next hour. If you're watching us live, say hello in the comments. If you're watching us on the recording, say hello in the comments. That's, that's kind of part of the fun of these live things. But this is a live stream for the next hour. We're going to be doing portable backgrounds. That's what the plan is. So I've got a whole bunch of stuff to go through. I've got some lights to set up, some backgrounds to set up. And we've got the awesome Sophie, who's going to be our model for us in just a minute. But first of all, I've also got the awesome Sam on the comments. Whoop, 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 whoo! Hi, everyone. There's lots of people here. And there was just a comment, which I thought was quite funny from uh, Misha. Sorry if I said that wrong. Yay, time to have a goey with Gavin Hoey. I like it, yay. Oh, steady. <laughs> Lots of comments, please, everyone. It's lovely to see where you're all from as well. Fantastic. We've also got Freya on the Super Switcher. You can't see her and you can't hear her, but she is doing the, the Super Switcher and making it all work. And um, we had a, a slight audio glitch to start with, but I'm sure it'll be fine. So she's monitoring that. Um, Fingers crossed it will be okay. I've actually turned my camera on today, so that's a much better start for the lives than usual. So before we get Sophie in to take a few photos, let's go through some background bits and pieces. We've got plenty to get through in the next hour. And the backgrounds. Well, my theory with this live was to create the real world of not being in the studio, of going out and taking pictures and the, the fun of taking your backgrounds with you, because we've done corporate stuff over the years many, many, many times, and it can be a little bit challenging, to say the least. So I've got a, a bunch of backgrounds to play with here. I'm actually going to set the light up first of all, because I've got a light to, to work with. Now, I wouldn't take C-stands on location, just to be absolutely clear. I'm in a studio. I don't want the lights to fall over. I'm using my C-stands, but on location, I would take something a little bit less uh, heavy duty. But let's have a little look at the, the light modifiers that I'm going to use. So my light is the Flashpoint Explore 300. It is a really good, small, powerful, portable battery powered light. It's a really good one if you're actually going to do portable stuff. That's a good light to take with you. And then my light modifiers are in this little tiny bag here. So what you'll probably notice as we go through this evening for me, this afternoon for you, this morning, I noticed there was someone from New Zealand joining us. So uh, whatever time of the day it is, I'm always going to try and multi-pack my bags. I always want to get value for money from every inch of space because if you're portable, there's a chance you have to carry this stuff around. So the more you can fit in a bag, the better. And a lot of the kit I've chosen, I've chosen because of the bags they come in. Really good quality bags means that you can just stuff a few extra bits and pieces in. So I've got the smallest, lightest, most portable softbox I own, which is the Glow Hexapop 24 inch. Let me get this the right way up. That way up? Yeah, that's right, isn't it? Yeah. That way around. The Glow, that probably just wanked the microphone. Sorry about that. Uh, 24 inch. This thing is as light as, a, you can't get an idea of the weight on a live stream, but it weighs nothing. It's a really lightweight softbox. Perfect if you're gonna be carrying it around I mean, in the studio, I do something bigger, but on location, that's going to do the job. But also in here, I have a few other bits as well. I have a bag which has got the egg crate grid, absolutely essential item for photography. I have a little S brackety thing, which is going to go on a second flash. Let me just go grab that. There we go. Sorry about that, off camera. There we go. So that attaches to that. So that was in the bag, not the flash, just the little S brackety round thing, which is superb. And that's going to go on here. There we go. And also in the bag, I have a reflector. So I can fit all of those bits in the, the, the bag that was designed to take one small softbox. It's not really designed to do that, but if you get a, a kit with a, a really decent bag, that's, that's kind of good news because you're going to stuff it full of. Oh, Bits and pieces. <laughs> Did I mention we're live? <laughs> I mean, if you're gonna drop something, I guess drop a, uh, a reflector. Go on, Sam, you've got a question. I have a question. So, um, Ifrain asked, are most of your light modifiers portable? 
yeah, I mean, pretty much everything is portable. I mean, if you want to go really portable, umbrellas are the way to go, I guess, are the most portable, but nothing I've got in the studio is so big that it can't come out of the, the front door of the studio, and I guess that's the definition of portable. There are just some things that are more likely to come out of the studio with me than others, and that really goes down to weight. You know, if I'm on public transport, I want to have something that is light, is portable, is carryable. If I'm in my car, I can stick something in the, the boot of my car or the trunk of my car that will just fit in and it doesn't matter so much. And if your so, wife carries it across <laughs> three fields or something, then yeah. that's even better, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, sometimes Sam carries stuff. Sometimes it's the job of the models, Sophie, just so you're aware. <laughs> you she might end up carrying stuff. OK, so that's the light. Let's set up a background. So the first background we're going to go with is by Manfrotto. So we've got some backgrounds by Manfrotto, and we've got a second set of backgrounds by Westcott. So my plan is to set up two looks with each set of backgrounds. Spoiler alert, there isn't a right and there isn't a wrong background solution. There is only what works some days and what works other days, which is why I have multiple portable backgrounds, because it depends where you're going to be. So this is the first one. This is the portable background kit. I have a set of stands and I actually have two backgrounds in here. And these are collapsible backgrounds. Collapsible backgrounds are really, really useful. All you've got to do is find the right way. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> right way in. So this is a Manfrotto one. And once again, the bag that they've come in is really heavy duty. I've had these before where they tear. And they tear because I stuff them with other things. So why put one background in when you can put two backgrounds in? Full disclosure, this one is not a Manfrotto background, this one is. And you'll spot the difference when we start using them because this is your kind of your cheapo, you know, get it on wherever and yeah, it's all right. Um, this thing is amazing. So let's set the, uh, the cheapo grey one up. So we're going to do like a corporate style background first of all. And then we're going to move on to something a little bit more creative, as fast as possible in my book. So we could just pop this up. Oh. Boing. Ta-da. I could just pop it up and, um, and just rest it against the wall. There we go. Which camera is that? Oh, over there. <laughs> Hello, over there. <laughs> I've got more cameras in here than I know what to do with. I could do that. It works okay, but I've been in many, many situations where the thing you don't have is a wall. At least not a wall you can rest things against. And this is a, I don't know, six and a half foot by five and a half foot. It's something like that. So it's a bit of an odd size. It's a bit too small just to stand on the floor. So we're gonna use a little background support system. There we go. So this is the Manfrotto magnetic background support system. And you can fit an extra tripod or a small light stand in there as well. Again, not designed for it, but you can get a couple of light stands in there to save yourself a little bit of room. And it is a couple of magnets. Let's see if we can bring it in. So these two bits are neodymium magnets, really strong magnets. And it just goes up in the air. When it comes to speed, this is the fastest background I have to put up. Something like that. There we go. Put that around the back. Whoop. And it just sort of magnetically attaches. Boom. There we go. Ta-da! That's it, background's up. And that's what you want. So if you're doing a portable system, you want to have something that you can put up and take down, more importantly, really quickly. Because time is of the essence, especially if you're doing corporate work, where you don't have a lot of time, you're often shoved into really small spaces, and you need to go and do those corporate headshots in tight spaces. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do a little kind of corporate -y shot with this one. So let's get a, a light set. Right, Sophie. Give Sophie a huge round of applause virtually. <laughs> and in the room, marvellous. <laughs> so Sophie is going to be our model for today. As you can see, Sophie is full corporate up there. You've basically got a jacket out of our cupboard of random items. It's not the look we're going to be going for for long, but there's a question. Stick it in. Go for it, Sam. 
Uh, are we going to see Gavin fold up these large backgrounds at the end? <laughs> this is Martin. Yes, Martin, we what? are. Hey? No. Yes, no, no. yes, yes. No, no, twice. No, no, no. We're going to go round twice. <laughs> We're definitely not going to be folding. And up. then Brian well, asked, is there any way to hang the Manfrotto in vertical format or only in horizontal? Oh, we'll get to that. Yeah. <laughs> is that a spoiler alert? <laughs> yeah, spoiler alert. Oh, well, I can actually answer that one. Yes. Okay, and easy. Um, do you use sandbags on those backgrounds? There's, that is a brilliant question. Yes, and at the same That's time, airframe, no. So uh, there's no sandbag on the bottom at the moment because it's okay in here, it's, it's quite safe. But if we were doing somewhere with the public, I would want to put some sort of sandbag on um, if you have them, but that is another thing for you to carry. You can get sort of water fillable sandbags. That might be a, an option to look at. But, um, you know, in the studio, it's just me and Sophie, and I've never tripped over anything, have I, Sophie? So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't imagine this going wrong at all. <laughs> over everything. We had another question as well from Charles saying, uh, can you purchase just a standalone? You can, Charles, because I did actually buy one for Gavin for his birthday once. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it doesn't get more exciting than that. Eh? Yeah, yeah. My birthday <laughs> present was a magnetic stand. So you don't need the, um, the, the tripod -y light stand at the back. You can just buy the magnetic bit across the top. OK, Sophie, I'm going to pop this near your chin. I'm going to turn a few things on first because it's live. If I didn't turn the flash on, it wouldn't be a normal live. So I'm just going to set my camera up to meter for f8. So we're going to take the most important picture of the day. Here we go. I've turned my flash off. I've dialed in a few important settings. I'm going to dial in f8, 250th of a second, flash sync speed for my particular camera, ISO 200, the native ISO for my camera. I'm going to take a picture without any flash firing in this ridiculously bright room. So we have the video lights up super bright and we are getting switch to the laptop there we go that let's make that full screen i didn't want to go full screen straight away so you didn't think your computer had crashed i can almost make sophie out on our really dodgy confidence monitor but i don't think anybody else will basically no flash no picture okay come out of that one before everybody thinks we've gone off air <laughs> okay so we know if the flash doesn't fire there is no picture to be seen i'll turn the flash back on Okay, Sophie, here we go. And corporate Sophie looks like this. There we go, LinkedIn profile picture is done. That's pretty good, actually, that's not bad. Uh, we're gonna make it a little bit more interesting because if you're going to use a gray background, there's a pretty good chance you're gonna light the gray. So let's get that second light that I had set up earlier and we'll pop it in behind you. Okay, here we go. So second light, top tip. Turn it on. There we go. Nearly forgot. So this light is just going to light the background because it's a bit sort of dark and grey, really. And although that might be exactly what you want, a second light just adds a little bit. It lifts the scene slightly. OK, what should we put that light on? I'm going to guess it's lowest possible power, 1 256th power. So that is another Flashpoint Explore 300. Same sort of light as the key light. Here we go. Okay, here we go. So that's what it looks like on its lowest possible power. That's what it looked like without it on. So you can see that how that just adds a subtle vignette. That is quite subtle, actually. Maybe, maybe a touch too subtle. If you're watching on your phone, that might not come over so well. So let's take that up. Well, let's go up two stops. One hundred twenty-eighth. that's one stop. One hundred one sixty-fourth. two stops. Can't do the maths. There we go. Here we go. And Zed has said, um, uh, oh no, sorry, no, this is Tosh, sorry. To Gav, your light meter is hanging on the C stand. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the but heads you, up. You always lose it. <laughs> I mean, I will still lose it. It's, it's just a matter of time. Uh, but that works really nicely. That just puts a nice little vignette in there. We'll do a couple of corporate shops like that. We'll get our value for money from Sophie. Here we go. Fantastic. Nice. And because these are the headshots, I can go vertical as well. They're only going to be head and shoulders pictures. So I've got plenty of, of room to play with. Let's go and have a little look. Check these are, are nice and in focus and sharp. And see Sophie's awesome makeup artist. Um, awesome makeup on your eyes. I love the makeup. That's really good. I love the green. 
Yeah, okay, so that works really well. That is nice, safe, sensible, corporate. Right, Sophie, go get changed. Well, change your jacket, let's not get carried away here. Because that's interesting, but that's not what I'm... That's not much fun, is it? Are you going to take some questions? Yeah, take some questions. Okay, so we, we've actually had quite a few people ask about the tethering. Oh, um, yeah. And I don't know if there's somebody from Adorama there who can put Gavin's tethering video link on. That would be really helpful. So we did, if you go and have a look at um, Adorama on YouTube, you'll see um, there's a video that we did fairly recently, which is all about tethering. So lots of questions um, we get it nearly every time we do something like this, um, which is great. But all the answers should be in that. Yeah. So that would be brilliant. Um, so... Stay. Keep talking, Sam. No, one, no one's looking. Keep talking. <laughs> Should have put a sandbag on that. <laughs> so Matt asks, can you position your key light to light the subject and backdrop if you don't have two lights? Let's, Matt, let's do exactly that. Thanks, Matt. <laughs> okay, so uh, first of all, I wanted to fold up this background. I didn't want to just sort of do it because I know someone will ask. So there are many ways to fold a background. Reversible background, by the way, we could have done blue, but um, obviously we didn't. Um, it's also, I don't know if you can see, this is a cheap background and it is, it actually looks much better on the video than it is in reality. It's quite curved, it's quite pringly. They, they tend to look more like that. That's how it tends to be, but to, uh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> so how do you fold a background? Several ways you can do it. If you've got a wall, uh, you can just push this into the wall. I'm not sure which camera does best. Yeah, maybe that one. Uh, you can just push it into the wall and keep going. ta -da. But if it's a small background like this, I will reach up, put my toes on the bottom, reach up to the top, bend over, and do the same thing. Okay, so same result. Either push it into uh, the corner of a wall or just bend over. But that only really works with small backgrounds. I'll show you big backgrounds when we get to this one, because this is much bigger. So this one is the Manfrotto concrete and smoke. So these pop-up backgrounds have two sides. That's really one of the big advantages. You can do two different looks with one background. Let's put this one up. It is much bigger. So I think this is about seven foot by some other feet. Don't quote me on that. There is links to all this stuff in the video description. If you want to really know what it is, go check out the video description when the video is finished, obviously. Let's pop that on there. Let's put it in the middle. If I was Manfrotto and I wanted a bit of advice from a user, put something in the middle. I mean, I could just put some tape or something. Mark where the center is. It makes life so much easier. And we'll pop that up a little higher. There we go, that should do it. So these backgrounds are really easy to pop up, take down, swap over. It doesn't get much faster than this. It really is terrifically good. Right, so, so you're gonna come in and stand. Still not in the middle, never mind. You're gonna come and stand sort of here somewhere. My little sort of OCD is going, well, I really, really want to move that, but I'm not going to. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> yeah, of course, go for it. Okay, so... Um Omen follower asks, do you have a suggestion for portable backgrounds that are full body, going behind and underfoot? Uh, yes. Um, yeah, so the Manfrotto highlight is a good one to look at. So um, that's a, a good one to start with. So that is a self-supporting, self-illuminating if you put lights inside and you can have like a sweep that goes onto the floor and that can be white, black, gray, various colors or the new X-Drop system that we're gonna look at next, we'll do them with sweeps as well. But I don't have one with a sweep, but... So, yeah, either the Manfrotto system or the Westcott X-Drop system. Both are very good at doing that. But we're gonna to get to the Xbox, the Xbox, the X-Drop system and the Xbox system later. That would be nice. All right, okay, so we've got a light, Let's pop it here. So how can you light both the background and the model at the same time? Move them closer together was the answer to the question from earlier. So let's put a light here. This is a little bit more edgy, a little bit more moody, a little bit more directional light. Got it. <laughs> See, I knew where it was. Uh, here we go. Okay, so let's see where we are. So Sophie, I'm gonna pop this near your chin. 
bing. Okay, F11. So we're shooting at F8. We need to bring this down a little bit. F8. Still on the wrong one. I'm on the wrong, wrong group. F8, bingo. So just so you can see what I'm seeing, I bring this in a little bit closer and try and get Sophie's face out of the picture so it doesn't autofocus on. Imagine that said F8. Oh, there we are. <laughs> okay, so that's what I'm looking at. I've dialed in my ISO, which is on the top bit, my flash sync speed, which is on the other side to this finger. Um, I can't do it, there we are. And it tells me F8. So when I reset it, that's the bit that will change when I test the flash. Okay, so that's how I'm, I'm working this out. We could do this by trial and error. We could use TTL. All of those are perfectly fine. Okay, Sophie, here we go. So I'm gonna go for roughly the same framing as I had last time, but we're gonna have a much different picture. I mean, Sophie has literally changed just your jacket. It is just your jacket, isn't it? That's it, that's all Sophie has changed, but we've changed the background and we've changed the lights and we've got a completely different feel to this picture as a result. I mean, that's just the first one, so that's, a, that's good stuff. That's the nice thing about working with Sophie. We could actually stop. <laughs> Should we stop there? That would work. Okay, so let's take a few more like that. I'm gonna let Sophie do her thing. So I've done absolutely nothing to this other than just kind of framed it up and put the light in place and yeah. Job done. One second, Sophie. I'm just going to change something I realised. I haven't turned my face detect on. I can see the, uh, the focus. There we go. It's not missing. It's at F8. So even without face detect on, I've got so much depth of field at F8 that I'm nailing the focus. It's just I'm getting old. So anything I can do to make my life a little bit easier is good. So there is a bit of a problem. If I go down a little bit further, what I'm getting here is... I don't know if we can see that in the dark, but I've run out of, of background. I can only really go down to Sophie's knees and then we have a little bit of an issue. So how do we fix that? How do I make that work a little bit better? Photoshop, that's a possibility. We could Photoshop that in. Uh, we could get a box for Sophie to stand on. I could lower the background down. That's probably easier. Uh, Sophie, you want to step out for me? Or we can actually make use of this whole thing and flip it over. Uh, Sophie, do you want to just hold that so it doesn't fall over on camera? Because that would be really embarrassing again. So let's just make that a little taller. There we go. And should we flip it over as well? Because there are two backgrounds. So let's do the, the other side, just to mix it up a little bit. And here we go. So if I want to have a tall background for an upright picture, Ta-da! Tall background for an upright picture. I will just move this around a little bit. I'm less keen on having a leg sticking out. Whoop, well, I knew that would happen as soon as I did that. Right. Do you want to answer some questions? Yeah, far away. away. <laughs> Strong <laughs> okay. magnets, but not. So Jane Ooh, asked, if you're outside with a bit of a breeze, could you put another magnetic holder lower to give a bit more stability? Or would you just get a sail? Yeah. <laughs> If you're outside with a breeze, honestly, it doesn't matter how many magnets you've got or clamps on it, it's going to go. Breeze is your, your biggest nightmare. Um, yeah, you could put some more clamps on it. I would probably end up putting some A-clamps at the top as well as the magnets and possibly some A-clamps at the bottom where the feet are as well. And then a whole bunch of sandbags and then find the least breezy place I possibly could. And um, cross your fingers, really. It's, uh, you have just made a giant sale. So we've got another question uh, from Scott to say, what would you recommend for backdrops on a tight budget? Uh, well, if we get time, I will show you the, the tightest, most meanest, cheapest background there is, which is really either black or whatever you have around you. Um, but we've done it super cheap, just fabric. At the end of the day, this is just fabric. So you could get a length of grey fabric and sponge paint it. We've used all sorts of things, haven't we? We've used uh, like duvet covers yeah, and sheets bedding. and um, rugs. Um, yeah, all sorts of you things. You name it, we've, we've had a go with it. Uh, a few people have asked about some of the gear that you use. Instead of keep repeating it over, everything should be in the description at the top, shouldn't More it? More or less everything yeah. should be in the video description. Yeah. More or less. Okay, Sophie, it's safe. In you go. 
Okay, so now I can go down almost as far as Sophie's ankles, give or take, but obviously I can't go wide. It is a rectangular shape. So let's just have a look, see where we go. Okay, so we had the, the cool, dark uh, gray. Now we have the, the warm, dark brown. And that works quite nicely as well. I mean, we are dropping into shadow, but down there because of how I'm lighting this. So it's not the end of the world. We can put a little bit of fill light in. Let's do that. Let's add a bit of fill light. Let's get a second light in here. Another question while you're doing yeah, that. Yeah, go on. Um, so uh, NATO, NATO, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. <laughs> this is uh, why you're doing that end of things. Yeah, it is. <laughs> uh, does Gavin prefer fabric or paper backdrops in the studio? Mm, it depends. That's a helpful answer, isn't it? It depends. I mean, if I was doing just grey or just black or just white, actually white, the walls are white, so I don't have to worry about that. I would definitely go for a paper background. Um, they're just easier to work with, especially grey, they're just much more seamless. And you'll see why when we get to the next one from Westcott. Um, but uh, if I wanted to do anything more like this, then I would use a background more like this. So I have far too many backgrounds. You know some photographers collect camera bags? I collect backgrounds. Lots of them. Okay, so uh, fill light. I'm going to pop that 132nd power. Yeah, let's go 1 16th power. I don't know why, I'm just guessing. I'm going to turn off my main light. So Sophie, quick little test photo just of the fill light. So this is just the fill light on its own. And you can see that's, that's really the brightest shadows, if that makes sense, what I'm looking at there. So the light's going to come in from the, uh, the right, which is already in shadow. So we, this is going to be the shadow side of Sophie's face. And that looks probably about right. So let's turn the main light back on again. See how they mix together. Okay, quick little test photo. So this is the two sort of mixed together. And yeah, we have a little bit of detail in there. I could maybe turn that fill light up a touch. I'll regret it immediately, but let's do it. Here we go. Last test. Yeah, that's one stop more. So we went from 1 16th to 1 8th. And if you're looking for a right and a wrong answer, there isn't one. This is photography, but we'll go with that. Okay, so what I've got is just a fill light bouncing off the ceiling, bouncing around the room. It's nothing more sophisticated than that. Okay, Sophie, here we go. I'm uh, gonna do the picture in picture frame. Yeah, there we go, because there's nothing happening at the bottom. Smash in. Good stuff. And just for the sheer fun of it, hold that thought, Sophie. Just for the sheer fun of it, one of the other thing I bought was the grid. Now, where did I put the grid? Oh, here it is. This little bag here is the optional grid, which we didn't link to in the description because I forgot. But if you go and have a look at the Hexapop 24 inch link, you'll find this is an optional extra. And this is a really good grid. It's quite a, a thick thickness of grid. Often they can be really thin. But this one's lovely. I know, it sounds odd when I say it out A grid loud. is lovely. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it right here. It is lovely. I know, I get so... It's, when you've worked with bad grids, having a really good grid suddenly makes all the difference. Grid's gone bad. <laughs> it's going to be a programme on TV. You wait and see. You wait and see. <laughs> OK, so let's pop that up there really close to Sophie, just out of eye height, just out of shots. Go. That's going to take away a bit of light. Let's meter it out and find out exactly what it was. We were at 132nd power. Let's find out what we're at now to get back to F8. Sophie, I'm going to pop this near your nose. Oh, pretty much there. Lucky guess. So I've got the grid on, but I've moved it closer. So it's kind of equaling itself out. So I'm back to... Thanks. Frey, I'm back to, I don't know why I keep doing this. <laughs> I haven't learned, have I? No. Uh, trust me, that says F8. Yeah, oh. F8. <laughs> <laughs> this is why it's live. If it was recorded, we could just drop that in, in the edit. Okay, so what I've done is I've switched on black and white mode in my camera. 
So I've just gone with a more sort of black and white feel, which uh, I think is kind of nice. I like that. That looks pretty good. It just feels a little bit more edgy and the, the color mismatch doesn't manage, matter so much. It just sort of blends in. It's not the best black and white conversion. Definitely better to do it in post-production. But if you're just looking for a quick and dirty black and white just to get a feel for it, doing it in camera is really good. Okay, really important picture, go wide. Most important picture of the day, that one. So you can remember where you put the light, where it all is, how you set things up. Okay, we're gonna move things around. Sophie, you wanna step out of the way? Sam has a question for me. I have. Um, so, Death Sniper asks, I know the depth of the grid uh, better channels the light, but does the size of the holes have any uh, incidence on the light? Yes, I don't know if I've got one to, hang on a second. It's a good question. And if I'd have known that was coming, I could have found my grids, which I'm not sure where they are actually. Hang on, in one of these drawers, here we go. Nope, that's the same grid twice. There's a lot of rifling around in a drawer here. I'm sure you're catching that all on the, uh, the mic, no, no, which this, is this lovely is for everybody. <laughs> it's not in here, it's up in the box. Damn it. Where are we? Yes, it does. Okay, there we are. It, it does, but it's also relative as well. So it, it, it's sort of not the size so much as the, the density of them, and that really is the size. So yes, it, it, it does. Go buy a bunch of different grids and you'll soon discover. Can uh, I right. ask something else? As yeah, well? please do. Um, I've lost the question. Oh, here we are. Nick asked, if on a location shoot, what power uh, watts would you recommend for softbox? I mean, Depends on your location, Nick, doesn't it, really? I mean, if you're outside on location, probably more watts for the better. If you're in a room that is relatively dark, you know, speed lights, nothing wrong with those at all. Uh, it, it really does de depend on where you're gonna be, and that's so important that you ask those sorts of questions, particularly if it's a commercial shoot, before you get there. Where am I going to be? And then assume they've got it wrong. So I always over what, because it's easier to have more and take it down than not enough and have to work with what you've got. But yeah, I mean, we've done everything from speed lights through to massive studio strobes. All right, big background. All right, here we go. How do you fold a background this big? It's not really, that's kind of. <laughs> okay. What you do is you find a corner and you put it into your, your lower abdomen. Okay, and you put your arms out as far as they will go and then you kind of lift the whole thing up and then bring your arms together and it will naturally fold in on itself. And if you buy a really good reversible background like the Manfrotto one, it's so much easier. If they're cheap and you're kind of trying to wrestle an octopus, it, it's a really annoying thing to do. So part of the thing about portable kit isn't what it can do and isn't how fast you can set it up, it's how fast you can put it away. Because at the end of a shoot, you don't want to be that guy or girl slowing everybody else down whilst you're putting your loads of kit away. So how fast can we get out of town? We've done the shoot, we want to go. Two backgrounds, packed, marvellous. Nice oversized bag, really makes that easier. I'm not trying to squeeze it in. Okay, then we'll break this down. This is done. This is an air cushion stand, which is lovely, but you kind of keep having to sort of push the air out of the things, which is, you know, air cushions is good, unless you're in a hurry. That was the stand, not me, if you could hear that. <laughs> okay, and then the little magnetic -y thing comes off the top. Yep, there we go. Close that down. That's it. Sound effects are free, by the way. You don't have to do those. They're not included with the, the item. You have to provide them yourself. Okay. And let's put it away in the bag so you can see it. That goes in that end. And that goes in there. And that's it, I'm done. We're off. So that's it, next job. And that's the kind of thing you need to know. How fast can I put my stuff away as well as how quick can I get it up and set it up? Okay, background number two, moving on. 
So if you are just joining us, we're halfway through. Welcome to the Adorama Live. I'm Gavin Hoey, one of the presenters here on Adorama TV. And we have a lot of lives now, which is kind of good. So thank you for joining me. Um, we are doing portable backgrounds. We've done pop-up backgrounds. We are now moving on to something a little bit more. Well, it's got pro in the name, so this must be more pro, right? It literally says it on the bag. So this is the Westcott X-Drop Pro. So this is the bigger version of the X-Drop. It's eight feet by eight feet, or if you're in the UK like me, 2.1 meters by 2.1 meters. We had to look that up because I still work in feet. So I'm just going to say uh, that Tosh has said thumbs up, guys. Yeah. Yes. Thank please, you. Please, please, if you're enjoying the stream and like it, like it, yeah, subscribe, and hit the bell more, icon, <laughs> then please. <laughs> Yeah, uh, click the uh, thumbs up and um, yeah, keep commenting and keep liking and keep coming and watching us. That'd be great. So inside of here, I have two backgrounds. So just like last time, I've got two backgrounds. I should say, actually, I forgot to say, this is a rucksack type affair. So you can actually, I've attached it to the chair. Yeah. I was trying to make it easier for myself and I've made it harder for myself. It takes talent to do that, you know. It's not easy. It's not easy. Hours of practice. Uh, right, so um, inside of here is a little sort of knapsack, and this is two backgrounds. And the first one out is the grey background, so we'll use that one first, I guess. So there's a background. We'll come back to that in a minute. There is the actual stand itself, and it is a stand. So where before we had like a... a lighting stand. This is much more like a tripod. So it's a much larger assembly. It takes longer to assemble, uh, but we'll do that in a second. And what else have we got in here? Uh, oh, there's a couple of verticals. I'll show you that. But the thing that fell out, I want to go and grab as well, because it's just popped out here. Someone knew what that was. Yes. Mm. It's the Mark II of the uh, light strainer. Not available from Westcott. I'm sure when they see this, though, Westcott will be all over this. So this is the Mark II light strainer. Um, yeah, we'll probably get to that. But it fitted in the bag because once again, Westcott, like Manfrotto, like Glow, had provided a bag that is big enough and strong enough to take more than just the kit it's supposed to take. So useful. Somebody remind me to do that at the end. OK, let's get this set up. So this is a little bit more uh, fiddly to do. It's not a quick light stand and there are some parts, moving parts to this to get right. I like this comment. Go on. Um, Kurt said, without a light strainer, the light gets soggy. <laughs> we can use that as the strap line maybe, Kurt. We could, we could do a deal. <laughs> okay, so let's pop that down there for now. So really it's a very large tripod which, uh, with the legs that are supposed to go out like that, but that would take up so much room in the studio, it really wouldn't work for me. But luckily you can close the whole thing up and have a much smaller, more uh, compact unit. So it'll sit against the wall, give or take, something like this. It sits about two feet back from the wall, or about 50 centimetres, something like that. Which sounds like quite a lot, but the Manfrotto with the pop-up backgrounds, that was the same distance from the wall. Not really any difference at all. Okay, so the legs are up. Then there are some verticals to put in. There are three uprights. The short one goes in the middle. The two long ones go on the outside. And because this is the Pro eight foot wide, I have to press a little button and drop them out like that. Okay, then you get your background. And we're going to go with the grey one first. Can we switch to this camera temporarily? There is a front and a back to the material. This is the, the side you're going to photograph. And you'll notice, if you go that close, it has a little bit of a, a sort of a texture to it. It's, it's like a fleece. It's really nice. I felt it earlier, and it's um, like the, the bedding and cushions and things that they're making that they call teddy bear. Um, which is, yeah, like a sort of teddy bear. <laughs> <laughs> a very loved teddy bear. <laughs> As a bonus, if you ever take one out and about and you, you know, break down in your car, you know, <laughs> could, 
could be just what you need. Um, not sure that's uh, a normal photographic. They probably don't mention that on the advertising, do they? Doubles up as an emergency blanket. <laughs> Man, they're missing out. Okay, but it is actually really nice to handle. Okay, so those hook on, there's some little eyes that attach in various places. And then you just keep pushing this out. And the art is to do this slowly. So it needs to be fully extended, but you can't do everything in one go. You have to do a little bit at a time and then come back to it. So we'll do that and we'll go around the other side. Did that camera go on? Is that camera still working? Yeah, there we go. Spent a lot of time setting this camera up. I may have wasted my time, but it doesn't matter. There we go. <laughs> I'm just looking over it thinking, yeah, that's probably not helping. But you get an idea of how far it is from the background. You just look like you're in a little tent now. You're building your own little camp in there. Yeah, little photography camp. Uh, so Nick asked, is it worth ironing fabric backdrops? <sighs> Probably not. Not if I've got to do say, it, Nick. It's not. No, I like What is an iron? <laughs> oh, I've never heard of that before. Uh, it might be. It depends. So the fabrics that we use, and the fabrics we use are always uh, stretchy. They have a, a degree of stretch to them. So this one is exactly the same. It is a wrinkle-resistant fabric. It's not you know, wrinkle-proof. But if you're using your own fabrics, and there's no reason why you couldn't ap apply your own fabrics to this system or just hang them from the wall, Get stuff that is like jersey, like t-shirt fabric, something that has some stretch to it. So if you're looking for fabric, look for two-way or four-way stretch in the description. Okay, so this is the, the background. Oh, here we go. Which one? I don't know. Oh, that one. Okay. <laughs> and that, <laughs> which, which one? <laughs> I've lost track of the cameras. So this is the background. It is fabric, but it is really good. I mean, you can't, you, know, you can't kind of touch it, but it is great. There is nothing more scientific to it than that. Just stretch it out and um, you're done. I really managed to get that tangled. So a lot of people have mentioned steamers. Steamers. I've never really had any luck with steamers. Um, I mean, I've tried it with an iron on steam and it, it kind of works. It's not really the same. No. no, we've got a steamer for the carpet, but it wouldn't really work. Uh, yeah. <laughs> If you have a system that works great, but I just like stretchy ones and then stretch them out. So if you're doing your own backgrounds uh, in your own studio, then uh, we have a, like a, a plank of wood that I put along the bottom. So something heavy that you can clip onto to, to pull it down and something robust in the ceiling to, to hang it onto. Not really a practical option if you're looking for something portable though. Turn up with a two by, you know, whatever it is, a two by one inch length of, of wood is not really the professional look we're going for. Right, Sophie, if you want to come and have a seat here again. So once again, we have a grey background. We're going to set the same... Oh, look, corporate Sophie is back. Looking very smart. Set the same idea up again. So we're going to bring this light in reasonably close. Something like that. We'll get the flash meter. Here we go. And I'm going to pop this near your chin. Again, I could do TTL. I could do... You know, manual flash. I could do anything I like, really. Trial and error. Here we go. I just realised, I'm just trying to think what it is. I'm in black and white mode. I've realised why my camera isn't right. I'm looking at it thinking, something is very wrong with my camera. It's because I've left it in black and white mode. <laughs> Got it. Okay, here we go. Quick little test photo. Looking so managerial. Look at that. <laughs> Honestly, Sophie, I'm going to come to a, a loan, maybe. Perhaps you can help me with a mortgage. <laughs> Looking very, very businesslike. It's very good. OK, so just like before, that kind of works, but it is a little bit dark in the background. So let's get that second light and pop it in behind Sophie. OK, so that's going to come in here. And we'll pop that. Straight ahead, spin it around, and even, and this is an optional extra, you don't have to do this, turn it on. I find it helps if you want to see the results to turn the light on, although many times I try with it off, just, you know, just to see what happens. 
If you tell them it's planned, you get away with it. That's, that's, that's it. It's like, oh no, I meant to do that. Yeah, I was just, just testing the individual lights. <clears throat> yeah, okay, especially on a corporate shoot. <laughs> okay, so uh, that is a background light. Let's turn that light down. Last time we were at its lowest possible power. I think as a fair test, we'll repeat that at 256 power. Okay, so here we go. At 256 power, again, it throws the smallest dot of light back there. It is pretty small. Let's take it up a couple of stops like we did last time, and I'll show you there's a little bit of an issue to be aware of. Here we go. Okay, so a little bit brighter. So we can see the background a little clearer. And if I go in and have a little look, I can see a little bit of the texture there. Now, to be clear, that's not a bad thing, that's not a criticism, it's just, it's definitely a little bit there. And if it bothers you, there is a really, really simple fix. I'm just gonna change my aperture to f2.8. And I'm gonna press the high speed sync button on my camera and increase my shutter speed to two thousandth of a second. Okay, Sophie, I'm gonna do a little test photo because I can't use my flash meter in high speed sync mode. Here we go, two thousandths of a second, f2.8, ISO 200, and that's a little bit dark on Sophie, so I was at one sixteenth power. I need to increase my power because high speed sync takes away some of the flash power. Okay, here we go. Just had a compliment for your makeup. We've had the oh, close up I shot. <laughs> you can really see it. <laughs> thank you. Okay, that's good. No more compliments for Sophie, that's just fine, we're working. <laughs> Uh, I should say, if you've got a question for Sophie, she does have a microphone, she can actually answer them. Um, I don't think you want to, but you could. <laughs> you could. Okay, so uh, let's pop that background on as well so we can actually see what's going on. So same settings as I had before, 164th power, just to throw a little bit of light back there. And now the background is defocused. There's a nice kind of speckle to it. I actually really like that. It's not paper grey. If you want paper grey, get, get paper. So there is a little bit of life and interest in there. Go for it, Sam. Uh, John asked, or well, he said he's been eyeing the X-Drop kit and wondered, did you find it possible to get the bottom nice and flush to the floor to avoid the gap on uh, the model's feet? Okay, I'm gonna give Freya a challenge. Um, I'm gonna zoom that in for you, Freya, and see if you can move the movable camera to face the floor. Good luck with that. We'll get back to you there in a second on that one, John. Or you're gonna do it live. That, oh, go for it, no, oh, yeah, that's, that's is that as zoomed in as it is? Oh no, there we are, I went the wrong way for you. <laughs> there we are. So there is a little gap. It was John, wasn't it? John? Yeah, okay, John, there is a, a little tiny gap. So, uh, it, you know, there is a, a tiny gap there, but where are we? Keep watching, John. Remember that gap, because we're gonna talk about that again, just for you in a little bit when we swap this background out. You wouldn't see Daniel doing that, would you? You'd never see Daniel Norton crawling around on the floor <laughs> just to help our audience out. <laughs> okay, <laughs> he'd make Seth do it, wouldn't he? That's what he would do. I know he'd, yeah. Okay, so uh, yeah, let's just take a few shots like that. I'm gonna pop this slightly brighter. I wanted to make it a tiny bit brighter on the background just so we can see what's actually happening. And because this is such a big background, I can easily go vertical and I can have plenty of space above. So maybe you need to do something where you need space above to put a title in or whatever. This is an eight by eight background. It's huge, so much space to play with. Let's pop it in black and white. Let's do that. Okay. Black and white. Okay, Sophie, yep, we're in black and white mode. Let's see how it looks. Maybe you wanna go classical. I'm gonna just keep taking photos. Here we go. That looks amazing. Mind you, Sophie looks amazing, whatever. I've got to stop giving her comp compliments when she's working. <laughs> okay, beautiful. The only downside of black and white is you don't get to see Sophie's amazing coloured makeup. But of course, I'm shooting in raw, so I've got the option to go back and actually redo these in colour if I want to later on. But yeah, that's really nice. So we've had a few other people uh, comment. Um... 
about the backdrops. Mm. Um, so Freddie said the other fabric X drop backgrounds have a closure flap and that he thinks they're brilliant backgrounds. And oh, there's another one. Honestly. Sophie, do you want to hop out? I'm going oh. to change that over. Yeah. So John had said uh, X drop kits also come with sweeps. Yes. Mm. So you can buy them. Um, where they actually sweep quite a long way onto the floor. I don't have any of those. I've not tried those. I've seen them. Yeah, that, that's great. And um, Patty said, uh, what happens if your ceiling is lower than eight foot? Yeah, that is a really good question. Hi, Patty. Um, yeah, I thought my ceiling was eight feet high. And then I bought an X drop kit and discovered that the rafters, which are the, the you can't see them, no, they're up there, uh, are actually about seven foot nine. <laughs> so almost eight feet. So it is a bit of a problem. You can run it slightly low, but then you're going to have to start clamping bits on. Or you can buy the non-pro version, the one that's seven foot high. So you, you can get a slightly smaller version of the same thing. I just went for the biggest one because I thought, well, bigger is better, right? That's the one to go for. But yeah, do double check your ceiling height first. And of course, you could just buy the backgrounds on their own. You don't need this whole um, system to hang it on because at the end of the day it's it's fabric you can just hang this on whatever you would normally hang your backgrounds on I could solve a whole bunch of problems okay let's do the other background one more to go we've got less than 10 minutes how fast can we get this up okay this is my favorite background we've run out of time that's always the way in it okay so I don't remember the name of this one but it's in the video description it's lovely Again, I'm looking for the three little holes. There we go. Let's hook that on. Here we go. Because I like sort of textured backgrounds. And this one reminds me of my old studio wall from a few years ago when we had it as a permanent effect, really. Here we go. Let's pop that on there. So let's put this up again. So just like with the pop-up backgrounds, you can swap out the backgrounds. It takes longer, obviously, but it's perfectly possible to take on location multiple backgrounds with this system. But what you lose in speed, you gain in size. Okay. <laughs> I'm in there somewhere. Nearly there. Oh. Let's hook that onto the bottom and then make sure these are fully extended. There we go. How's that? That's pretty good. Little wrinkle in the middle. You just find yourself working your way around just sort of fixing little bits as you go until you get it absolutely perfect. Okay, so where's that camera? Yeah, you're going to point it down there again. I'll get afraid to move the camera. Safe, so come on back in. Okay, there we go. No gap. No gap, John. Right down to the floor. It's brilliant. <laughs> So it does seem to depend on which backgrounds you get. This one goes right down to the floor. Yeah, John's noticed that. He thought, ooh, that one is flush to the floor. <laughs> <laughs> right down to the floor. Okay, so uh, we're getting a little short of time and I want to keep taking some good photos. So I'm going to jump straight in with, here it is, the grid. Let's go with the grid. Go with the grid. That's okay. all scrunchy. <laughs> it does sound, ears, yeah. yeah, it does sound really weird when you hear it. You think, oh, it doesn't sound like really good quality, but trust me, it's a really good grid. I'm going to put this one in a slightly different lighting position. Let's put this more or less as an overhead light. Um, we're going to grab a sandbag just to make this really safe because it's going to go overhead, even with the really light weights from the, uh, uh, the hexapop. And the Explore 300, sorry, that was heavy. <laughs> you want to make sure that you get a sandbag on there because if you have one, you should definitely use it. And as always with sandbags, 
If you kick it and it doesn't move, it's not doing anything. It must float. Don't let your sandbags touch and the floor. Terry, very important in capitals, don't forget the light strainer. Uh, yeah, thank you, Terry. Thanks, I hadn't Terry. forgotten. I'm kind of like, we're going to overrun by five. But, uh, honestly, right, okay, let's just pop this. Yeah, it's about a third over. That's pretty good. So I'm going to go back to the same settings. I don't need high speed sync anymore. I'm not going to worry about a shallow depth of field. I'm going to go back to F8 for the best quality. ISO 200, 250th of a second, and not in black and white. Okay. So first things first, I can go for a much, much wider, oh, you can see Sophie's knee. That's Sophie's knee, if you're wondering what that is. It's kind of like, what is that? <laughs> Sophie's knee, poor old Sophie, like all models, very hard up, can't afford trousers, that haven't got holes in them. Um, We'll get you some patches. We'll get some Adorama patches for you to, to sew on. Let's pop that over there. Let's bring a fill light in. And we'll do the same as we did before. Put a little fill light in. Point it up at the ceiling. Put it nice and high. With the fill light, what I'm trying to do, oh, that's a good angle, well done, is make sure that the top of this is higher than Sophie's head, which you can see it is. Uh, another way of, of doing it is asking your model, can you see into the bowl at all up there? Up. Okay, so if you can't see directly into the, uh, the reflector, then none of the light will directly reach your subject. It'll bounce around the room. That's the idea. Um, it is turned on. We'll put it where it was before, 164th power. Okay, here we go. And we'll make sure it fires. It does. I'm going to take that up a little bit in power. And we may end up going up a little bit more just because I think I need it. There we go. So we're just getting a little bit of light coming in. Just a hint of light just filling in the shadows. Whoops, whoops, whoa, somewhere in the middle, just there. <laughs> okay, let's do some close-ups. We can do some wide shots. And the huge advantage of a large background like this is I can do all the different shots I want to do without having to worry about running out of background. The only downside, the only slight problem is that Sophie can't lean on the background because it is fabric. It looks like it's solid, but she can't lean on it because it's just, well, it's soft as fabric. Okay, that's pretty good. Really important picture to take is the final one back here. I say final, we've got uh, one more set to do. Okay, that's such an important picture. I can't stress that enough. Okay, we have 30 seconds to go. <laughs> More or less. So let's get rid of that and let's swap out to the best light modifier on the planet. There are only two in existence. I've got both of them. It is the light strainer. This is the version two light strainer because it has the, the optional um, duct tape to stop the uh, light coming out part of it. And it has the fluorescent green bungee cord uh, so I can actually see it easier. Um, two unique features that make my light strainer absolutely amazing. So both Westcott, Manfrotto and Flashpoint Glow have not asked about this. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? Despite me using all of their kit in this, not one of them said, you know what? We should definitely talk to you about the light strainer. It's like, well, <laughs> these things, you can't just find these in any old kitchen, you know? Oh, actually, now, now I think about it. You okay, that's gonna can't go find there. one in my kitchen anymore. No, you haven't got one in your kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> we used to have two of them, remember those days? Oh, those are the days. Okay, so the light strainer is gonna go up there. I don't know if we can go to, that's, that's the camera. There we go, we can see it up there. Uh, it is pointing somewhere. I'll be honest with you, it is a bit of a random nature, the light strainer. You can't really steer it that well. Um, it also takes an awful lot of light from the scene. So I was at one eighth power with the softbox and the grid. I'm gonna be at half power and that's probably not gonna be enough, but we'll see. Okay, here we go. Okay, let's see, actually at half power is about good. Just, sorry, Sophie, that's a test shot. I should have said that. <laughs> just a little test shot. I'm just gonna move that light just about, there we go. Okay. 
just see how we go. So I've just moved my bounce light so it hits a lower part of the ceiling, bounces a bit more light in. It's a hard light source, very, very harsh directional light. Not many models can really take this amount of, of hard light. Luckily, Sophie can. She has amazing skin, great makeup. Both really help. Okay, Sophie, let's take some photos. Fantastic. We'll include the light strainer in the shots so we have a behind the scenes. And then I'm going for it. Great stuff. Okay. And for the last couple of pictures, what happens? What happens if I move the light strainer? I don't know. Let's find out. Let's spin that around. There you, we go. You ask in your own questions. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get to see the questions during the live, so I don't know. I'm, I'm assuming everybody's asking. So that I'm just going to say that all the things that Gavin choose, well, most of them, obviously the light strainer, isn't it, are in the description above. <laughs> yeah. yes, so if there's anything there that you think, oh, go and have a look at that, go and have a look. Um, and somebody else asked when the next live is, so I'll just let you know before we disappear. It's well, then the, they're letting us do another one. Yeah. Are they? Woohoo! <laughs> uh, it's uh, the 30th of March, so um, make sure you join us then. Okay, I'll stop there because otherwise I could keep going all night. Okay, so really important, of course, is breaking this down. Sophie, I forgot we've got to take this apart. So the last bit is you finish the shoot. You've got to take this apart. Uh, do you want to go sit out of the way? Because I really don't want to drop a light on you. And I'm not saying I would, but there is a, well, I have a history. Okay, and there we go. And the light strainer is quite a heavy thing. <clears throat> it's made of really solid, solid metal. It's definitely not cheap. Nah. Okay, so uh, putting it down, which camera am I on now? That one, hello, hello over there. Uh, putting it down is basically the same as putting it up, but in reverse. That sounds really obvious now I say it. Just drop everything down. Here we go. And if you weren't here earlier, the reason I'm taking this down live during the session is because if you want to have a portable background, knowing how to take it apart is really fundamental to uh, owning one. I mean, the first time I used a pop-up background on a, a corporate shoot, I don't think I'd had it very long. And I remember going home with it in the boot of the car, basically still up. It was, it was really, really hard to see out the back. But it kind of hit that point where it was, I had to leave because it was getting embarrassing. People staring. Luckily, it was in the days before mobile phones. Otherwise, I could have gone viral with that. Okay, so once again, nice big bag. This is an oversized bag. It's only really supposed to have one background in, but here I am stuffing two backgrounds in. And you'll notice how, how careful I am at folding this up. In the back. That's it. I'm sure Westcott would love me to fold it and roll it and do it all nicely, but um, that's real world stuff. Okay, there's that. And these just come to pieces. One, two, Three, they go in a bag, which I've put over here. Get it all clamped down, that's it. And there's little Velcro bits if you really want to Velcro it in for traveling. Okay, turn that upside down. There we go. And this stuff's made out of aluminium. It's, it, it feels when you're doing it like this, kind of a little bit wobbly, but it's, but it's pretty durable because I've survived with it. Okay, put that in there. It's gonna be a bit of a squeeze because it's not designed to have two backgrounds in it, but uh, it'll fit. It's mostly air. Probably won't fit on a chair, oh, once again. <laughs> Just hide behind the chair, should I? <laughs> you can't see us, but we're all laughing at him. <laughs> no one's laughing. No one's laughing at all. It's absolutely fine. <laughs> Dinner. Okay. That's what everyone joined for to watch you put things in a bag. <laughs> and then that's it. I'm off. Whew. 
I'm now matching the color of my shirt. <laughs> and that's it. And that's what you want from a portable system, whether it is pop-up backgrounds, or whether it's going to be sort of an all-in-one, this kind of thing. It doesn't matter. As I said right at the start, no rights, no wrongs. You get a background system that works for your needs, and the chances are there isn't a, sing well, there isn't a single background that works for everything. Otherwise, we'd all buy the same one. Right, okay, that brings us to the end of the live stream. Hopefully you found this useful. Um, I've really enjoyed this one. It's been good fun. Uh, thank you very much for all the questions and the comments. Uh, let's do a few thank you to Sam on the, the comments over there. I'd like to say thanks to everyone else um, who commented, watched. We've had absolutely stacks of people on today. Have so, we? Yeah, I hope you've enjoyed it as much as we have. It's been fun. <laughs> and thanks for commenting. Thanks for answering each other's questions. And uh, hopefully you'll join us again next month. Yep. Give it up for Sophie. Did a fantastic job. Woo! Freya on the Super Switcher. Most of you guys for, for just being here and making it possible and Adorama for letting us do it. So there we go. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching. <laughs>